uh, today i'll be covering the session on git so these are the topics that i'll be covering today i'll start with the overview of git and why do we need a version control system like git and about the installation procedure then how to create a local repository in git and about staging committing the code and i'll just give a brief about the branches and then merging code and how to work with remote repositories and i'll also cover a few additional git commands so starting with the overview so what exactly is git git is an open source distributed version control system so what do we understand from the distributed version control system so basically let's just imagine a situation where we have a very huge code base that is a complex code base that involves lot of files and on top of that there are multiple <laughs> developers who are working on this particular code base <laughs> so each of the developer will be making his own changes so there will be lot of changes that is getting involved in this whole code base so in such a case there should be a system that can actually maintain a history of the changes that has happened till now like what and all changes are made till now by who and all so we need a history of what all has been happened till now okay also let's in order to be more clear just imagine a situation where we does not have a version control system like it let's say in the same scenario if you are having a large code and with lot of developers contributing to it if there is no mechanism that can track who has done what till now so there is no way let's say uh, after a few days or something if there is a particular code that has caused a crash in your application there is no way to figure out who has done that code so that he can be he will be more aware of what are the you know side effects of that particular code or how to fix a particular issue related to that code so in all such scenarios also there will be lot of developers who will be modifying a single class file so in all such cases it's really required for a version control system like git okay so another thing is that um, it's not like there will be two repositories that is if you are having a code base there will be a remote repository that is which contains the whole code base in addition to that each of the developer who is working on that particular code he will have his own local copy so he so that he can make his own changes and then commit the code so that is why it is a distributed version control system okay so yeah that's about the overview and then why do we need git so that is in the same uh, like like how i have told previously if there is a big code base there is a chance of uh, like if there is any crash or anything there is no way we can track who has done it or to revert it or any such uh, any such things are not possible without a version control system like git so i'll just uh, go through this one so real life projects generally have multiple developers working in parallel so a version control system like git is needed to ensure that there are no conflicts between the developers requirements in such projects change often so a version control system allow developer to revert and go back to an older version of the code like i said if there is an issue with the code you can just go back also you can just get a history of what and all other changes that have gone to the code base till now okay so next is about git installation so you can so there are a lot of tutorial like a lot of uh, articles available online of how to install and everything so i've just listed on the command in linux you can use sudo apt install git all that will install git and in case of windows you can just go through go to this particular site it will automatically start the download okay so once download is done you can install git you can just go through the normal uh, procedure of installation and then once it is finished you can confirm if it is installed or not by referring to this command that is git hyphen hyphen version here it will show the uh, if git is installed it will show the particular version number okay so next i'll start into like i'll start with how you can create a local repository in git so mainly github and all when github and all comes into picture that is when we are dealing with the remote repository so this i'll start with how you can just create a folder how you can 
initiate git in it and then make few changes and how we can commit the code and all those things okay so here first of all let us imagine first of all we have to create a folder a demo folder i'll just show a demo of how you can do it now uh, create a like normal folder and in that we will have to do git in it okay and then uh, i'll just show how you can do it so here i have just created a folder now now you can open command prompt here and then do git in it so this will initialize a empty git repository in this particular folder now okay so i have already initialized the repository here now so now once uh, since initialization is done you can just create a normal uh, text document just so that we can see how it works so okay so i have just created a normal text document and then uh, you can open command prompt and here there are a lot of git commands i'll just go through each of the command in uh, like upcoming uh, slides so first one uh, now that we have made a change you can see what is the change that you have made so that is in git status you can see what are all of that changes that you have done till now it will come under untracked files so if we have deleted a file modified an existing file all those changes will be coming in this git status okay so okay so that is a that is it about uh, creating a local repository now i'll just explain how this this uh, staging and committing the code so once you have created once you have modified made some changes in your code then comes staging part and then committing okay now uh, staging is like committing is the process in which code is added to a local repository repository so till now you haven't committed anything it is just that you have few changes but you need to commit it to a repository only the staging area is there to keep track of all the files which are yet to be committed so any file which is not added to the staging area will not be committed so this gives developer control over which files need to be committed now i'll just show how you can uh, see the staging area here so now when you see git status you have seen that this is part of untracked file now in order to make it to the staging area you can use if there are multiple files you can just give space and add those file names else you can just do git add that particular file name or just do git add dot so this will add it to the staging area now if you see git status you can see that a new file has been created okay that is test.txt so that is it about staging and committing now that's about staging now i'll show you how it can be committed to the local repository now for committing we will have to use this particular command that is git commit hyphen m commit message now for commit message mention changes that is done as part of this commit that is here if you are like fixing some particular bug in a code you can just give a short info about uh, what this what the particular code change is about now like i showed you uh, to find information regarding what files are modified and everything you can use this git status command and now once it is committed git log will print all the commits that have been done till now so let me open it i'll just make it initial commit now this is committed now i can see this particular commit in the recent commit okay now coming to what a branch is so let's say uh, now whatever changes we are doing it is done directly to the master branch now let's say if you are doing some development and uh, it's better to create another branch and then do all the testing kind of things in that particular branch okay let's say uh, only the stable code you can put inside master and whatever is not tested yet maybe you can create another branch and then uh, like test it there and once sir everything is completed then you can merge into the master branch so that's about branches so branch is a pointer to the latest commit in the git repository 
So by default, like I showed, it will be uh, pointing to the master branch and uh, multiple branches are needed to support multiple parallel development. Now, this is the command you can use to create a new branch. Let us skip branch and you can here test means uh, it's a branch name. So git branch, branch name you can give. And once you have, once you do that, a new branch will be created. And then in order to switch to the new branch from the master branch, use the below command. I can just show that. So this will create a new branch. Now, once I do git branch, you can see uh, there is master as well as test branch. Now, in order to switch to uh, test branch, I can use git checkout and then the branch name. And again, you can see now it is pointing to this test branch. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's about branches. And then uh, the merging part. So, this is like if you have done some changes in the test branch. Now you need to merge it to the master branch. So in that case, what you have to do is once changes are done and uh, everything is done in test branch, you can just uh, switch to the master branch and do git merge test. So this command can be used. So next, I'll, so till now I've explained about how you can work with the local repository. So that is in your local system itself, how you can create a repository and manage the code. Okay. So that is like more, this working with remote Git repository that will be more, uh, that will, that's having more use case than the other one. So here uh, Git repository, uh, like remote repository means like there are a lot of developers that is contributing to the same repository. Okay, local ones won't be visible to anyone, right? So remote is one, there are multiple, you have a main central, central place where code is needed and there'll be multiple people who'll be contributing to that. So in that case, each of the developer will have his own local repository where he will he will clone from this particular central place. Uh, the central repository, he will clone the code here into his local PC and then he will work on it, okay? So GitHub is an example for that. You can, I'll just show how you can do all these things in GitHub. Now, uh, if you have, like once you have create a GitHub account, you can go to the repository tab and there you can create a new repository. Like if you need to maintain, if you want someone else to contribute to the same thing, you can just create a new repository here and just fill in the repository name. If you have to add readme, license and thing, you can create like this and then do create repository. Okay, so once that is done, uh, if you need to, like if you want to push some code into this particular repository. So one easier way to do that is you can just use the git clone command. So I'll just explain uh, how you can do it. Uh, So I have already created a like sample repository here. Now you can go to this code section and here you will have the clone command down, what you have to copy, okay? So this is the repository URL, okay? Now you copy it and uh, you can use git clone and copy the repository URL here. So once you go to this particular folder, you can see that repository is completely copied. Okay, so this is the easier way to do it. If you have to link to the your local repository, you have other git commands as well, like git remote add and all you can do, but this is much more easier to use. So once this is done, so you have cloned the code. Now the next thing is you can make changes in this uh, document, like the code. So here I have just taken a sample text document. So here you can make changes and then do the same process like git add, then git commit. Once git commit is done, you can use git push command. So, so this is cloning part. So that I have explained now. Next is pushing the changes. So once uh, you have committed the changes to the clone repo, use git, git push command to push these changes to the remote repository so that it's visible to everyone. 
Now git push hyphen new origin master. This is the command that you need to use. So this will push the code from the master branch in the local repository to the master branch in the remote repository. So I will just show that also. So now this is the test file. So now I'll just show how you can modify. Okay, so you can check the status of the file by using git status. So once it is done, So this is the this is the previous commit that has been done for this particular um, repository. So when change is okay, you can just do git add. So that will add. If you check the status again, uh, you can see that this test document it has been modified. That is, we have just modified it now, right? So once that is done, you can mention a commit message that is. Um, So when you still check the git log, your commit message will be visible as well. Okay. So next is so this have push we have pushed that code. So that changes have been reflected here. Okay. Now that's about pushing. And uh, now there are a few additional commands that which you can use now. Next is this is git pull, git commit hyphen hyphen amend, and then git reward. So these three commands I'll just explain. Now git pull is used to uh, pull the latest changes from the remote repository into the local repository. The remote repository is updated continuously by various developers, hence git pull is necessary. So basically it's like, um, uh, now if it is a remote repository case, okay. So someone have like, in uh, you have pushed, uh, like you have pulled the latest code from a repository. And meanwhile, some other developer has made some changes in that repository and he have committed it. So those changes won't be present in your local repository. Like, like today, if I pull the code and, um, uh, like yesterday, if I pull the code and today someone have uh, made the changes. So those changes, if you want to be available in your local repository, you can just do git pull origin master. Okay. Now git commit hyphen hyphen amend, passing the hyphen hyphen amend flag to git commit. Let's say amend the most recent commit. This is very useful when you forget to stage a file or omit important information from commit message. So it's like uh, once you have, when you're doing git commit hyphen m and give the commit message, so that is committed. Now let's say if you want to modify the commit message to add some few info to that, you can just do git commit uh, amend and uh, modify that and then push the changes, okay? So next is git revert. This is very important, like in case if you have done some changes and if it is causing some crash or anything, if you want to revert that particular change, you can just like find out the commit ID from the git log. In git log, if you see, you will have commit ID along with all the info, everything. So you can just pass the commit ID along with git revert command and that will revert that particular commit. So yeah, that's it about git. So Git, actually it's a very big topic, but these are the basic things that will be required for you in order to push the code and everything. Now, when this, so here I have covered mainly about how you can uh, pull the code and push everything in a local repository as well as in a remote repository where you have your own account, like from your account itself. Now, if you have to contribute to another a particular community. In that case, if you have to commit the code, you will have to create a pull request and everything. So about those details, I'll be covering in uh, the upcoming sessions. So yeah, that's it for now. Thank you.